you're also here to talk about your concerns about Somalia, the yes. border, and what you said is an increasing number of, of militant groups and militants building up trying to wreak havoc, particularly after the comments of a, of a leading official in Pakistan. Yes, um, when I saw the comments by Foreign Minister of Pakistan, that as a result of what is going on in Afghanistan, uh, some of these extremists are leaving for Somalia and for Yemen. I could not help but uh, think that um, this is like a wake-up call. In fact, we are here also to raise the red flag that unless the whole world uh, looks at Somalia as a challenge, a real challenge to international peace and security, it may be too late. Mm. Um, and therefore, we, we are looking at this. We've worked in the past. Um, uh, as foreign minister, we were able to oversee the process that had led to the establishment of the transitional federal government, first of all, of Ab President Abdullah Yusuf, mm. and now of Sharif. Um, we think that the world has not been able to support them adequately. But you also think the countries of the region need to be able to do several things, which is what we mm. are doing, and we are sharing experience with our American friends, and, and of course, because um, it's important that the United Nations Security Council also does several things. Mm -hmm. I want to congratulate them because they did lift the arms embargo against Somalia so that uh, the current government can begin to prepare itself, uh, prepare a police force, able to safeguard its, its own uh, integrity and and so this is this is ongoing but a lot more needs to be done the humanitarian crisis that has been uh, brought about uh, as a result of um, the the breakdown of the Somali Republic because it's really an, a failed state unfortunately um, it's, it's been able to the humanitarian crisis that has been brought about is also being mm -hmm. addressed adequately the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in conjunction with countries of the region we are trying to do the best we can to isolate issues uh, also taking into account that there could be elements that get um, through the refugee camps but the intentions are less than honorable so perhaps this is an unfair comment and, and, and this will be the last question and we yes. that our national security advisor to President Obama now Jim Jones mm -hmm. our the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman Michael Mullen uh, Bob Gates our Defense Secretary very frequently say that many of these problems in Afghanistan or Yemen or other other places don't have military solutions but the character and structure of the overwhelming part of the response is often highly military, 99.999% yeah. military. And so I, I am interested, given the fact that you're such a key player, you yourself are such a key player in concern in these issues, what, what would you advise Americans as we look at a framework for dealing with Somalia today and, and, and trying to get this equation uh, uh, more efficacious, if you will? One way of helping the Somalis uh, by friends like the United mm -hmm. States it's really to strengthen the capacity of the current administration. Mm. And, and of course, this may not necessarily, uh, quote unquote, be a military solution. But I can tell you that the intelligence, uh, comparison of intelligence, and even be able, uh, the, the, the very need to look at um, the military formations around the region and how we can, without uh, fiscal encounter, uh, on the ground, because uh, one is reminded of what happened and uh, President I did mm -hmm. when American public opinion uh, actually turned against American involvement in Somalia. But times have changed. A lot of mm -hmm. water has since gone under the bridge. And if America does not take this matter of Somalia seriously now, it, it may, as I said, be a little too late. And we are ready to compare, and to, to, to compare notes, uh, compare intelligence, uh, work together. Um, and of course the government is trying to train, for instance, a Somali force, a uh, Somali police force. They need to be able to, to be uh, really given the wherewithal to be able to come up with, with such, a, such a police force. And, and of course, uh, you cannot talk of uh, Somalia at the present time in our region without looking at uh, our other neighbor to the north, the Sudan. And we wish them well. They are going to have elections in the month of April. These are critical elections within the framework of the comprehensive peace agreement. We continue to urge uh, the Sudanese to always uh, adhere to the spirit uh, and letter of the comprehensive peace agreement because by January next year, about this time next year, they'll be going to the referendum to be able to determine whether South Sudan will remain part and parcel of the larger Sudan. So the issues in the region are intricate. Um, they have a direct bearing on international peace and security. And as I said, we are here literally to raise the red flag on Somalia.